In this video, we're going to learn how to use the if, else if, and else preprocessor directives in C. These preprocessor directives allow us to implement conditional compilation, where portions of source code are only included in our final program source code if some condition is met. So the preprocessor is the first phase of the compilation of a C program, and the preprocessor will process any preprocessor directives in our code, which will mostly result in operations that manipulate the final source code text before the code is compiled into an executable program. So you may already be familiar with the preprocessor from using the define directive to create constants. So for example, if we say here, number define buffer underscore size 100, this is a typical way to make a constant in a C program where we can use buffer size anywhere in our program and we'll get the value 100. So for example, we could say printf percent d backslash n and here we'll put as an argument buffer size. And if we save this compiler program and run it, we get 100 as our output. And what's really going on here is that define is what's called a preprocessor directive. It's creating an object like macro called buffer size. And the preprocessor is going to replace every occurrence of buffer size with the text 100 before the program is actually compiled into an executable program. So for example, if we use the dash E option here, when compiling our program, we can actually see what the source code looks like after the preprocessor has run. So we'll open up the D file here. And if we scroll right to the bottom of it, we'll be able to see our program after the preprocessor has run. And we can see that buffer size has been replaced with 100 here. So the preprocessor can do these sorts of text insertion or text replacement type operations with our source code before it's actually compiled. We can use the if, else if, and else preprocessor directives to optionally insert code into our final program source code based on conditions, which is why we say they allow us to implement conditional compilation. We might want to insert code into our program depending on the platform our program is running on, whether it's a Windows machine or a Mac machine. So here, I could say number sign define platform code one. And then in our main function, what I'll do is use the if directive. I'll say number sign if platform code is equal to one, then printf platform one followed by a new line. We'll also have number sign and if here as well. So we can save this, compile our program, and run it. And now we get platform one. If the platform code wasn't one, if it was two, we could save this, compile a program, and run it. Now we get nothing. So this source code here is only being inserted if this condition is true. So the printf will end up in the compiled program if the platform code is set to one. We could actually see it. So we'll run the compiler again using the dash E option. And if we open up the file here, we'll be able to see that printf has been inserted. We can see it right here, printf platform one. So that's the behavior we can expect when using the if directive. There's also an else if directive. So we could say here, number sign, elif, and we'll say platform code is equal to two. We'll printf platform two followed by a new line in that case. We can have multiple else if directives. So we could say number sign ELIF platform code is equal to three. We'll have a printf with platform three if this is the case. So we could save this if we change the platform code to two and compile our program we're going to find platform two as our output. If we change the platform code to three, save it, compile a program and run it. Now we get platform three as output. And there's also an else directive. So here we could say number sign else, and we'll say printf unknown platform followed by a new line. Then if we change the platform code to something like four, we save this, compile a program, and run it. Now we get unknown platform. 
So an expression that evaluates to zero will be considered false. Any other expression will be considered true. So for example, if we say here, number sign, if zero, printf will not print, followed by a new line. And then we have number sign else, printf, zero is false, followed by a new line. In this case here, we can expect this printf here to be inserted into our source code. So we'll save this, compile a program, and run it. And we do get zero is false in our output because zero here will evaluate to false. But any non-zero value will evaluate to true. So for example, if we have number sign, if negative one, and we have a printf here, non-zero is true, followed by a new line. And then we have number sign end if. If we save this, compile our program and run it, we get non-zero is true because negative one or any other non-zero value will always be true. Now we can also perform checks involving constant car values. So for example, up here we could say number sign define version code is the character A. Then down here, we could have an if directive that checks the version code. So we could say number sign if the version code is equal to the character A, then we'll have a printf version code is equal to A, followed by a new line, and we'll have our number sign end if as well. We can save this, compile that program, and run it, and we get version code is equal to A. We can also perform some operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division as part of our condition expression, along with a few other operations. So for example, if here we say number define buffer size 100, and we have number define total buffers 10. Here we could optionally output the buffer size based on a condition that involves a computation. So we'll say number sign if buffer size times total buffers is greater than 500. We'll have a printf inside of this if directive here. And buffer size is 100, total buffers is 10. So 10 times 100 is gonna give us 1000, which is greater than 500. We'll save this, compile the program, and run it. And we get 100 in our output here. What if we change it to 5000? 1000 is no longer greater than 5000. So if we compile our program and run it, now we no longer get the buffer size output. Now we can use the or, and, and not operators. So for example, we could say here, or one, and one being a non-zero value is going to be true. So if we save this, compile our program and run it, we're back to having the buffer size output. And that's because false or true is true. We can also use the and operator. So if I say here, and one, and save this, if we compile the program and run it, we no longer get the buffer size output. And that's because false and true evaluates to false. Now we can also use the defined keyword to check if a macro has been defined. So for example, if we say here, number sign, if defined OS, number sign end if, and here we print f OS is defined, followed by a new line. If we save this, compile our program and run it, we won't get OS is defined in our program output because we haven't defined a macro called OS. But if up here, we were to define a macro called OS, then if we save our program, compile it and run it, now we do get OS is defined in our output. We can apply the not operator here as well. 
So I could say, if not defined, then output OS is not defined. If we save this compiler program and run it, we won't get OS is not defined because OS is defined. There are preprocessor directives, if defined and if not defined, specifically for the purpose of checking whether or not a macro is defined or not. So for example, we could say here, number sign, if def. This is the if defined preprocessor directive. It will check to see if OS is defined. And if OS is defined, we'll output OS is defined. We can save this compiler program, run it, and we get OS is defined. Now, so far I've been using these if, else if, and else preprocessor directives inside the main function, but we can use them anywhere. So for example, maybe up here, we could say number sign if five is greater than zero. We're gonna set the object like macro value to 500. Otherwise, we'll set value to be 1000. And then we'll have our number sign end if. And then down here, we could print out value. So I'll have a printf with value colon percent d backslash n, and we'll output value here, whatever it is. So we'll save this compiler program and run it. And right now we'll get value is 500. And that's because this condition here is always going to be true, and the value object like macro will always be set to 500. We can use function like macros as part of our condition expression. So for example, we could define a function like macro like this. We'll say number sign define func x, x minus 100. And this is a macro that behaves a bit like a function in the sense that it accepts an argument. And we could use it here. We could say func 50 is greater than zero. So in this case here, 50 minus 100 is going to be negative 50. That is not going to be greater than zero. So we expect a value of 1000. We could save this compiler program and run it. And we do get value set to 1000. If we change this to say 200 and save this, now 200 minus 100 is going to give us 100. 100 is greater than zero. So we expect value to be set to 500. We can save this compiler program, run it, and we do get that value is set to 500. Now, if we use a macro that's not defined in our condition expression, rather than causing an error, by default, the preprocessor will replace it with zero. So for example, let's say the platform code is never defined. Then down here, if we check whether platform code is zero or not, we could actually output platform zero. We can save this, compile a program, and run it. And we get platform zero here, even though platform code is no longer defined. And that's because the default behavior of the preprocessor is to replace an undefined macro with a value of zero. So that's pretty much all the key things that the if, else if, and else preprocessor directives can do. But I'll post a link to the official documentation in the description that includes more details. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.